I can't be your mommy, okay? I'm too pregnant. I can't be your mommy. Next up. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. Okay, you know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much for your statement. Hi, how are you? Hi, I was wondering where you got your um, f statement, your statistic about people who transition, detransition, as well as the, that you are infertile after transitioning. Because yeah. I myself take hormones. I do testosterone injections, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot of doctors, and none of them told me that was true. Okay, so on my podcast, I actually cite all the sources. If you look up my name and my podcast, you can, I mean, it's in so many articles, and also, as I said, sexchangeregret.org actually lists all of these statistics with their sources. Um, so obviously, I, don't, I, I can't give you a hyperlink as I'm standing on the stage, but you can definitely find it on my podcast, and you can find it on sexchangeregret.com. Thank you for the question. That was, I think, the first question we got there. Hi. According to Britannica, the definition of the nuclear family has expanded with the advert of same-sex marriage. Children in nuclear families may be couples biological or adopted offspring. Does this mean that the merch you sell supporting you know, nuclear families means that you support trans couples adopting, gay couples adopting, and spreading this rhetoric that you yeah. talk about? So you're talking about the expansion of definition. So right now they've expanded the definition of woman to include biological males. This gets back into what I was saying earlier about the left's controlling linguistics and just pretending that, okay, a nuclear family can now be two trans parents um, that are adopting a child. That is not the nuclear family unit that I am talking about. Um, I believe that I am talking about marriage between a male and a female, which naturally and biologically produces children. Uh, so no, I do not take that new updated definition of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a nuclear family. Thank you for your question, though. Hi, um, I Hi. raised my hand before, so I just want to preface that I am like have opposite views, but I do want to have a genuine conversation without feeling belittled. So I do just want to preface that. Yeah. Um, I am a feminist. Um, I do study specifically academia mm -hmm. and the structure of academia and what that looks like for people of color. Um, mm -hmm. So in relation to free speech, like, do you feel that like free speech is free for everybody in terms of Western society um, and the America that we live in today? And at what point does free speech no longer become free? What do you mean? At what point does it become no longer no um, longer become free? Some rhetoric can be harmful to other communities, especially in the way that it's spread in the media. Um, and I think that goes for both sides. But can you give me an example? It's always easier to you know answer um, a question. So if like I have a... what I know, we all are aware of what happened on campus last year. Um, with... I'm not. Okay. Great. Look it up. Um, so, so it was just okay. involving um, the feeling of LGBTQ members of the community feeling unsafe with mm -hmm. rhetoric that's being shared in terms of transphobia. Like, what, uh, like if you're a man, I need an example, and someone, like if you're a biological man and someone says, hey, what's up, dude? Um, more of like there are students on campus that are living in communities where they don't feel safe because of rhetoric of explaining that transphobia isn't accepted. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is just like, how do you think free speech impacts everybody in communities? Yeah, I mean, I, the idea that if somebody looks at a man and calls him a man, that they're suddenly unsafe because they've created a false reality in their own head. Um, yeah, I don't abide by that. I think this is what, what's really happening is that we are celebrating mental disorders in America right now. Um, <laughs> I had a, I had a stalker, a very serious stalker at FBI ended up getting involved who had suffered from schizophrenia. He very much believed, and it was a terrifying thing to go through. He escaped the Psych 5150 hold, and he very much believed that he and I were in a relationship, and he would send me about 100 emails a day, okay? In the world of what you believe in your own head now needs to be accepted as reality, I would have had to marry him and raise my children with him, okay? But what was going on in his head wasn't actually reality. And me saying that this person needs to stay away from me and my family because there's something wrong with him and he was threatening to kill me if I didn't, you know, raise my child with him, that was reality. That was something that had to be dealt with. So what's happened right now is the left is trying to make it seem that people who see reality for what it is are demented and are creating unsafe territory, and that's not the truth. In fact, what I think is unsafe territory is for people to be affirmed in their delusions. So I will never refer to a biological male as a female. And if that makes somebody feel unsafe, you know, I'm not following you around. I don't know what happened on your campus. I wouldn't follow you around and say, hey, you're, you're a male. 
totally fine. Go live your life as you want to live your life. But when you say that the way that you live your life now has to impact me and I have to pretend that I see a woman when clearly you are a man, I shouldn't have to play that game. That's all. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello. My question is a little bit of a different speed. Uh, earlier today you mentioned uh, Patricia Colors or somebody from the BLM movement. And you said that her only qualifying factor for speaking about different things and issues was because she was black. And during the White House hearing about white supremacy, you mm -hmm. was on that. And a question was asked whether white supremacy is a threat or not. And your only qualification to speaking on that was being black. So what do you say to people that say I, you're being a hypocrite? Yeah, so I didn't say on this stage that Patrice's only qualification was being black. I said that people gave her tens of millions of dollars, had no idea where it was going to go, and were happy to do it because she was pirating. She just kept saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. It was stupid. They lost their money. Bad investment. Oh, well, too bad, so sad. Um, regarding qualifications to speak on what's harming black America, you just have to be able to examine actual statistics, right? <laughs> Are you, are you telling me, would you honestly say that when you walked into this room today, you were afraid that white supremacy was gonna kill you? I ask this to black people, to be honest. Are you afraid that a Klansman is gonna come down the, down the street on horseback and pick you up? Be honest. Um, I'm, not, I'm personally not afraid. Okay, so that's it. So when I was speaking at the congressional testimony, I was saying, my experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman's gonna come get them, right? But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black crime rates. When, you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the things that we're suffering from. You know, number one, I would say, is, is father absence. We need to get our families back together. We have to stop letting the government raise us. Um, I do believe, uh, I agree with some of the things you just said, but at the end of your point, you just mentioned a father absence and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and studies are actually shows that black men who are actually in their home participate with their children more than any other race. Yeah, so, great. So what, do you, what you just said is a fallacy then. No, 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 I'm talking about when there's not a black father in the home, right? So every natural ill follows in the black community. So when you separate the black family, if you look at statistics between black families that are together and white families that are together, the poverty rate, I mean, it, they're, they're both doing well. You're, it's a two point difference between white and black families. When you remove and you break down the black family, it's unbelievable, right? It's a pathway to prison, it's a pathway to illiteracy. So I'm only talking about broken down black families. I'm not saying when the black family unit is together. That brings us back to the Winslows, Family Matters, and the greatest show that was ever on television. I do want to get some more people. I want to get some more people. Thank you so much for your question. Hey, how are you? All right, how are you doing? Good, Good. evening. I have an article pulled up on my phone from May 27, 2023, and its title reads, Charlie Kirk's TPUSA teamed up with a registered sex offender. And if you just allow me one second, okay. um, the TPUSA second annual pastor summit was partially funded by a known convicted pedophile, Sean Bergstrom. Mm -hmm. So would you feel comfortable of your children joining an organization in part funded by a convicted pedophile? Okay, so first and foremost, I have no idea what you're talking about. You have the benefit of reading an article I've never heard of. Um, I couldn't talk about that, obviously, that's post when I used to work at Turning Point USA, so that's a better question that's being directed to their staff. I don't know how it happened, I don't know if it was a mistake. I don't know if what you're reading is fake news. What I will say is to answer your question, would I ever want my child exposed to a pedophile or anything that was no, pedophile friendly? Organization in part funded by a pedophile. Yeah. I, I, I would right guess, now. since you can be any person, and again, that could log on to the internet right now and Are donate Stone? and donate Is thirty. Rolling Stone, a part of the fake news or what? Now? Is what? Rolling Stone. Y yes, Rolling Stones. <laughs> Rolling Stones. <laughs> yes, us, okay. us magazine okay. and Rolling Stone are not a great yes, source for media. I mean, 
Rolling Stone? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Okay, please. Um, I, I, I was to, trying to answer your question. You I then cut me off. What okay, I was going to ahead. say to you is that what ends up happening with, when these people do hit pieces is like right now, if you want to go donate to, I don't know, what any presidential campaign, but make Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy JFK, mm -hmm. whoever you want to donate to, you can be a small pocket donor. You can give $20, and obviously there's going to be no background check done on you. Again, I have no idea what you're talking about. You I just want to be clear. You're a sponsor, though, so if you want to address that, if you feel I can't address that because I don't know what you're talking about, no. and I don't work for okay. Turning Point USA. Right. So, you're, okay. again, your question is better. But you're on a stage right now behind yeah, the Yeah, speaking okay. on, at, on issues that I care about, mm -hmm. free market capitalism. So do you stand against pedophilia, or do you not? I stand against pedophilia. I will say that 20,000 so times. Why are you speaking for an organization in part funded I'm literally pedophile. saying I cannot speak on that because I have no idea uh, what you're talking are you going to keep asking me no, to pretend please. that I know what you I'd found in an Rolling answer. Stone if I bring an up answer. a random art but article I'd love an answer. Go ahead. I have answered you 12 times I will never support pedophilia ever in any okay. capacity so whatsoever the funding I, to TPUSA? I, if they are be if TS if you're telling me TPUSA is being funded by pedophiles, in right, in, uh, because you found it on Rolling Stone, okay? okay? Uh, of course, if if that is the truth, which I have a feeling it's not, then I would openly denounce the funding of anything by a group of pedophiles, which is why I don't support. Uh, so maybe don't win that organization. Maybe not uh, it's such a sidebar. Candace, get off my Candace. Okay, next. Well, first of all, thank you for coming. Okay, um, let's just give it a second so I can hear you. <laughs> Guys. I just want to say this, if you're spending tens of thousands of dollars to attend this university to be led to believe that Rolling Stone is a good source of information, you need to get a refund ASAP. First of all, uh, hi. First, hi. First of all, thank you for coming to the campus. Uh, second you. of all, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to your faith. Um, as a Christian myself, I know you're a Christian. Um, I saw the video you put up uh, about the Christian debate with your husband and Allie B. Mm -hmm. Stucky. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your faith and how that's kind of inspired you. Yeah, so, the, uh, hmm, well, you know then that I am sort of in between a rock and a hard place right now. I am Protestant. My husband is Catholic. Um, I'm looking more at the Catholic faith for a lot of different reasons. Um, first and foremost, because I, I do believe that males lead the household, and so my children are being raised Catholic right now. Um, and so currently at our house, we go to two different churches, which is not ideal, but for hol holidays, we go to the Catholic church. I was raised by my grandfather. He was by the book, uh, when I say in terms of the Bible, the reason why he was never invested in um, secularism of any sort is because he thought that all of it was the devil. He was like that devout of a Christian. He didn't celebrate any holidays um, and really kept to really just his faith and his family. And so I always say that I was very immersed in scripture when I was a child and then I very much resented it once I got into school because it wasn't cool to be a person that read the Bible. It still isn't cool to be a person that has faith, especially if you're on a college campus. It's something that is looked down upon. And it's actually one of the pillars of leftism that I wish I had talked about tonight is atheism, which was also crucial to Marxist beliefs. They, you were not allowed to have faith if you lived in a socialist or a communist society uh, because they wanted the government to become your god. They wanted you to believe in nothing else but the government. And you're seeing that take place today as atheism is being encouraged. And so as I um, began diving into politics and really seeing things that I believe are, are demonic, you know, Satan is the author of lies and deception. I can think of no more cruel deception than to tell a boy that they're a girl, right? And to encourage them to mutilate their own bodies. Um, so, so much of what I see today is satanic and in essence, and it drew me back to my faith very quickly about, um, you know, eight years ago and just in helping to make sense of what's going on. You know, the Bible is that resource. You are never going to learn more than when you read the Bible, when you really throw yourself into that. And so even though right now, I'm in between and learning more about the Catholic faith. There is no question that everything that I have, everything that I am, is thanks to God putting me on this journey. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've Hi. been wanting this for a while. So my name is Joshua. I am from Brentwood, New York. You guys should Google Joshua Chan, Brentwood, New York. Great person. I'm great. Um, anyway, so just, it's about health. I want to switch to healthcare. 
my favorite topic in the world. I love What's healthcare. What's that? Healthcare. Healthcare. Okay. Great. Ms. Owens, Disaster. I'd like to begin by underscoring the importance of healthcare as a fundamental right. Many Americans, including working class white, black, Hispanic, conservatives, mm -hmm. believe that everyone should have access to quality healthcare without financial barriers. Additionally, as conservatives also prioritize fiscal responsibility, it's worth noting that the United States spends more money on healthcare than any developed nation, mm -hmm. yet lags behind in health outcomes. It's, yep. it's a situation where it seems like we're paying too much and not getting enough in return. Conservative, and this is the question now. Conservative healthcare policies have often emphasized individual choice and market-based solutions. Mm -hmm. However, it's, oft, it's been observed that private health insurance companies often prioritize profit margins over patient care and can lead to yeah. administrative efficiencies. In contrast, universal healthcare systems as seen in many developed countries not only ensure that healthcare is a human right for all, but also achieve a greater cost effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. From a moral and fiscal standpoint, it's a compelling argument to eliminate the middleman, reduce administrative costs, and negotiate lower drug prices to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all Americans. Yeah. Lastly, no one in this room likes their health insurance company. No one. Yeah. Essentially, they, 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 especially when the health insurance companies deny care. People like their doctors. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Last question, sorry, sorry. Okay, so, uh, how can conservatives health, conservative healthcare policies yeah. align with these moral principles of equity and Passion and ensure that everyone can access health care without financial hardship. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do two, yeah, more, yeah. two more questions after this, maybe? Okay, that's a long one. Two more, guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of you. Um, so, first and foremost, the health care system is an absolute disaster. I have an entire episode where I sat down with someone and discussed this. Um, people wrongly believe that what's currently happening is our, our health care in America is an example of capitalism in the free market. It absolutely is not. It is the exact opposite. Um, the fact that you walk in to a, a clinic, you don't know what anything costs. You're essentially blindfolded. You go to the hospital and then you get a magical bill and they say, oh, that Tylenol that you had, we didn't tell you it cost $400 for one tablet, is, is just completely wrong. America is not an example of free markets and being able to actually choose. Um, so that is, that is the first problem, is that the bureaucracies, Everything behind it just needs to completely die. If we actually had a free market solution to healthcare, and it's interesting because I'm married to someone that's from the UK, where yes, they do have government sponsored healthcare via the NHS, but it's a disaster and they're all able to pay privately and they're able to compete and give people the lowest, the lower price. It, it's phenomenal. So an example of that that Charlie Kirk always gives is LASIK surgery. Back when LASIK surgery was being covered by insurance, it was astronomical, the price to get your eyes fixed. And then insurance said, we'll no longer cover it. We consider it to be cosmetic. And now you can get your eyes fixed with LASIK for like $3,000. So it went from being $25,000 per night to $3,000 because they allowed competition. So when health insurance companies were actually removed from the equation, it then became a free market environment and doctors were going, okay, I'll compete and here's how much I'm willing to do it for. So all of that needs to be disrupted so that doctors can actually compete for our dollars. And I think the health insurance companies are an, an, an absolute scam and I hope that it collapses in the near future. So I'm trying to get two more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But health, it's an important topic, so I'm glad you brought it up. Oh, you're gonna, okay. Hi, I wanted to avoid um, kind of the, I feel like a lot of the questions have been, you know, when did you stop beating your wife kind of things. Um, but I wanted to ask, I feel like Republicans are very divided. Um, there was, while I was literally walking over here, they just voted to oust McCarthy from the speakership. Um, and I think back to things like in 2020, the Republican platform was, you know, just readopting the 2016 platform. So I was wondering how you felt about McCarthy being ousted and second, um, what might be like three really specific like policies or things you would want to see if there's a new Republican president? A uh, new Republican president? Or Republican or, Congress uh, okay. just in general? So I, the, he didn't get ousted yet, right? Last I have data on, he did. Yeah. Oh my God, I just found this out from you because when we took off, I, I, I turned my phone off. I had no idea. Wow, hmm, that's really interesting. I would like to think about that before I answer it. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on it right now because I'm not, I need to kind of process that. I mean, we've been kind of feeling that you're exactly right. I feel like since Trump was in office that there has, there has been this division in the Republican Party, which I will say on the whole is a good thing um, because I think that what Trump said was right and that very much it was becoming a swamp and there was no difference between a Republican and a Democrat. And with the MAGA movement, that was, the swamp was disrupted in a very meaningful way. Um, so having that dissent and not having everyone be in lockstep is fundamentally a good thing. Um, how it's going to impact Congress and things of that nature, I actually need to think about. So I'm not gonna answer that portion. Uh, things that I would like to see implemented if we had a Republican president, the absolute um, 
abolition of the Department of Education. It has been an absolute disaster. Defund the Department of Education. And of course, a president is not a dictator, so assuming we have the House and the Senate and the presidency is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that is the first thing I think that needs to be changed is that so much of what we're suffering from is true ignorance, emotion, and very little facts behind the emotion. And if we can get people performing at the academic level of all of these other nations, it, it wouldn't be the circumstance. Uh, I would also like to see a complete abolition, and this kills people, of welfareism. I think that these welfare policies, people relying on the government, it's a new form of slavery. Uh, that would be something that I would focus on. And you know, beyond that, uh, uh, Hungary is a great example right now of what happens when you put in place pro-family policies. It, you really study what uh, Viktor Orban is doing in Hungary. It's absolutely incredible. They're like the odd man inside of the EU. Pro-family policies would be something as well. I am not interested in a Republican uh, presidency that's just going to be focused on revenge. I think we actually need to have a vision about what we're trying to correct in America. So a couple of things, maybe not in a particular order, but that I would like to see. Thank you for your question, though. All right, now I'm running after toddlers, so. <laughs> hey. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of reading and how that helps people be more enlightened and speak um, and think more freely. What do you think about that um, when we're thinking about book bans happening in states like Florida? Um, so I want to be careful uh, because now we're getting a lot of books and I'm not sure that they are the books that should be in classrooms like White Fragility, which they're you know passing around, which is just really state topics that are being implanted into people's head. Um, I'm talking about, you know, true education, like people actually learning hard academics and not fluffy ideologies. Um, but the, what book ban are you talking about when they're banning like CRT? Uh, I believe there's been a variety of books um, related to... But they're to not banning you from buying them. They're saying we're not going to have them in the school system. Uh, yes, at school, yeah, libraries, totally fine. and it's also with LGBTQ plus books and related topics. For kindergartners, yeah. I, I think sexuality and uh, little five-year-olds don't mix. I think mommy and daddy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's my personal and honest opinion is that what is going to follow very closely behind transgenderism is pedophilia. There is absolutely no reason that there are teachers fighting to talk to five-year-olds about their genitalia. It's sick, it's weird, teaching their colors and their numbers and to go home and love their parents. And if you show me a person that believes that they have a right to talk to my child about pedophilia, you're gonna have a very upset Candace Owens, let me tell you, because that person is a pervert and they should, have, they should not become within 10 feet of a child.